Right, hello everybody, not much today, welcome to a brand new Elden Ring series, how to play an astrologer. So right out of the gate, let's have a look at the astrology class, and what his starting stats actually are. So we start at level 6, which is about as low as it gets, I think it's on par with the profit class that we covered last series actually. Um, this is actually quite important because um, it means that the early levels, those early rune costs for those levels are going to be very cheap. So if you wanted to perhaps pump a particular stat early to meet certain stat requirements on a weapon you desired, you can do so and in our case vigor is, is the culprit because level nine vigor is unacceptable and um, what is the primary rule of elden ring you know level vigor level vigor level vigor and then you underline that in red because um even as a caster class right you know glass cannons don't work in this game eventually you're gonna get hit and then you know death um we start with the minor 15 which i think is joint highest with the profit um which is actually kind of standard for a casting class or casting setup um ideally if you're gonna go pure cast you want kind of 25 to 30, if not higher, really 30 to 40 range, I guess. Um, but we're not going to be doing that. We, much like the Prophet, I'm actually going to do a mixture of, a mixed match of melee combat and sorceries to try and cover as much as we can. It's more of a Spellblade type build, but I want to kind of cover as many of the int space weapons as we can and kind of, we'll cover as many as, we're going to be pushing in as high as we can, so we're going to cover a lot of sorceries as well. Now we start with an assurance of 9, which is relatively low, uh, very low, in fact, and we're going to need to boost that because it's not as important as Vigor in the early game and it won't hinder us while we're wearing a robe like this but if you intend to use armor in the near future then endurance 9 is unacceptable uh, but we can we'll, there are ways and means to deal with that later we can cover that later now strength is 8 which is incredibly low we actually want a minimum of 10 to get this build off the ground so that's kind of the first order of business for this video in fact um, along with the new weapons we'll acquire um, we start with a dexterity of 12 which I believe is on par with the well it's a little bit lower than sorry the prisoner class who's the other in based uh, well, let's look quickly actually. The, yeah, the prisoner is the, uh, the other type. He starts with dex 14. Dex, but yeah, his intelligence is a bit lower, but he makes up for with dex. If you wanted to say start a moon veil type build or dex int build, this is your man, but we're not going to do that. We're going to cover that in a different series, I think. I want to follow the astrology. We'll get a bit of versatility here. <clears throat> now, intelligence I was speaking of is 16, which is perfect i mean really first break point is 20 so we're within within striking distance of our first kind of soft cap if you like um in terms of damage dealt but it's certainly high enough to use a lot of a lot of the sources we are going to want to cover in the very very early game um we also start with the faith seven which is not really faith is not an important stat for us at all if we might we might boost it a little bit just to use some of the buffs if you so want but i mean I've, i did just play through on my own and I don't think I've used Faith once. You don't really need the buffs. It's pretty strong. Sorceries in this game are incredibly strong. And there are other ways to kind of boost your damage that don't require, um, you know, Faith boosts like Golden Vera, for example. You can, you can, well, you can use Golden Vera as, as an actual war if you want a bit of extra damage. Um, we have an Arcane of Nine, which is irrelevant to us. I am going to do uh, an Arcane build at some point because I really like, like to get to grips with the Dragon Community incantations and bleed. I've never done a bleed build in my whole career. So. Which is kind of sad, isn't it? It's a lot of fun to be had. I'm missing out on. <laughs> anyway, now let's look at our keepsake. I always start with the crack pot because you start with three, which you'll need to make um, fire pots, um, holy pots, sleep pots, whatever. That is. It's basically like a free grenade. And having three straight of that means there's one you can pick up in a cave, there's another three you can buy from the very first merchant you meet, which we should have seven grenades they are extremely helpful to take it on if you use fire pots we're not without strength but if, you, if we were to boost strength or faith or something like that they're very useful to take on like the earth tree avatar type bosses because they, they're extremely susceptible to fire it's also useful to chuck a grenade into a pack of enemies and then i mean it's not as important because we're a caster we can just you know we have other means of doing so but i do prefer those and if you're honest the rest of them are, are garbage crimson Am amber medallion i mean you could pick up a better one in the game but this gives you slightly more F hp but it doesn't give you as much HP as just leveling Wiggy yourself, but it's a waste of a talisman slot, in my opinion. Lands between rune, I mean, runes are not hard to come by in this game. They're very easy to lose, granted, if you die, but they're not hard to get, and starting with 3,000 runes off the bat is not essential. Golden Seed is pretty useful. Um, starting with an extra flask is quite a quite a, quite a quite a boon, but realistically, you we are going to collect so many of those, we will reach the maximum long before we get to the end of the game. Fang dip dashes, I mean, until you get the spirit caller's bell, these are useless anyway, so whatever, right? I prefer the wolves, anyways, that sort of thing, if you're going to use a kind of low-level ash, uh, ash summon. Uh, so, sort of key, you get what well, they're useful to open, like, imp statues and things, to get you fill like, the secret rooms, the secret areas of the game, but there's no crushing desire for so sort of key right at the beginning of the game. 
and you find enough dots around the game like typically my playthroughs i don't use them i, I never i never get through them all so it's a waste of time which branch that no, no, is a waste of time boil prawns um boost physical damage gauge i don't think you start with three but you can buy these from a merchant in the um leone at the lakes area and it's not worth not worth it shibiri's road that attracts enemies aggression like why you'd want that is beyond me i don't know i do not know anyway that's it for introduction this is a hero dangerous dave so we're going to jump into the game what i'm going to do is skip the intro animation so we can get straight to the um class we'll cover his weapons and his gear just so we can talk through what we're going to do what the plan for this video is so let's get cracking boom right so this is the starting area um there's, there's, there's not much to do here. There's, there is one little thing here, which is a complete waste of time for our build. So this is a tarnished wise figure. You can use this in multiplayer, um, but I don't use. I play entirely offline. I have no interest in multiplayer. If you want, if you want a multiplayer build, there are plenty of other guys that are. I am strictly PVE because it is more fun for me. <laughs> I like panorama builds. I'm not really interested in in uh, the multiplayer aspect. So let's have a look at the um, astrology, astrology gear. So starting starting front of the gate, we have the astrology staff, which is there's one of two or three early staffs you can get. In fact, the the, the other earliest staff you can get is the Carrion, I think Carrion Glintstone, Glintstone staff, I believe, which you can pick up. It's like a guaranteed job, which is actually comparable to this. Although I believe this actually scales better than in the early game. So I will probably level this until we find a better staff. Um, we're also going to use the meteorite staff later on, um, because we're going to use some of the meteorites, the gravity sorceries, basically. Uh, not all the time. We're not, not going to spam rock sling or anything like that. It's going to come in handy on occasion, but also it's very helpful because it doesn't require anything to upgrade. It's just scaling with, with um, intelligence struck bat, so you can just save your smithing materials for other other weapons which you're going to need by far. Now we start with the short sword. Now this is our first goal. Really, is to upgrade the sword because the short sword is not inherently bad. In fact, you can actually buy a second one very early in the game, and you can duel with these bad boys. But the problem with it is it's the range. It does come with a useful skill in it, which is kick, however. Which is very useful for the guys with the shield. So we're going to hang on to it. We're probably not going to level it up, but we'll hang on to it just to use until we have our own um, actual wall kick if we want to use that. Now, we start with the scripture wooden shield, which is only marginally better than the rickety wooden shield we started with with the prophet. It's it's a steaming pile of dog shit. Um, well, what is this parry shield? But it's the weakest parry shield you can get, and um, my personal parry time is horrendous, so I'm not interested in that. Now we have the astrologers, so we can upgrade the shield. Is the point? I prefer to guard counter rather than parry, um, because every time I try parry, I just get hit. I'm rubbish at it. You can laugh at me if you like, um, and you probably will. So we have the astrologer here. Now this is particularly high immunity, focus and vitality, which is typical for casting. So it's it's good for madness build up and sleep and poison and things like that so it's pretty useful resistances wise i mean it's not the best time obviously physical protection it's <laughs> not the best you can counteract that with perhaps the um one of the dragon crest shield talisman is it the you know the one that increases physical domestication or you can just you know wear armor um but it's useful at the very beginning of the game so that's that now we do start with two key sorceries as well we have glintstone pebble which is kind of your typical range attack. And then we have Blitzstone Arc, which is useful for... It's like, it's like your rune clearance. So you get packs of rats, packs of enemies, packs of dogs, anything like that. Packs of bats. Anything running at you on mass, you can spam a couple of those and it will wipe them out. Now let's crack on. So this first part of the game down here, right? This first boss here, you're not you're not intended to kill. I believe there are people that can and have killed it, but um, you get another chance to later on in the game when you're actually prepared for it. This... This is basically, you hit him a couple of times and he murders you. So, because basically you can't really get hit. You've got no means to heal yourself at this time. So it's just, we'll just, we'll just take it for the team. Um, I'll, I'll have a go, obviously I always do, but realistically, we won't be able to. Nope, that's, that's basically dead. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, the shield is a problem, right? You know what? Fuck this guy. No! See ya! Bye! I was gonna say I'll choose life, but that seems a 
poor choice of words, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to do that. We have another cutscene here, which I'm also going to skip because um, I've seen these a hundred times. I'm sure you have too. But this is the stranded graveyard. This is basically what is known as tutorial cave. But first of all, you notice we get plus crimson tears. Now the crimson tears will increase your health, and these brilliant tears will increase your FP. Now FP is basically like your mana. It's what you use to cast spells. So in simplest terms, red is your health, blue is your FP and green is your stamina. Now, the stamina bar seems quite big, but we, with the Jewish Nine, it's not much stamina at all. Now, you can skip this cave and go straight through those doors up to the main world. We're actually going to go through because I want to pick up some runes because the runes will enable us to buy a couple of useful items when we leave the cave. So, we also get to showcase some of the gear that we have. Now, straight ahead, this is what's called a, a Lost Side of Grace. Yeah, Lost, lost Grace, big fun. Um, now this is useful for a number of reasons. First and foremost, you can pass the time. Why would you do that, you ask? Well, that's a good question. So, at nightfall, at night time, certain enemies, uh, certain field bosses will only appear at night, and certain enemies like bats will appear at night time as an additional extra. So if you're depending on, if you want to fight the bosses, you want to rest on night, if you don't want to deal with things, wait until morning. It's not relevant to us right now, but to bear in mind, moving forward. We have flasks. This is, you can add charges to your flask, which you can't do at the moment, you need, um, Golden seeds. If we decided with the golden seed keepsake, we'd be able to have a free flask with the map. But there are there are a plethora of these around. So it's not not useful to us. Um we can also increase the amount replenished by flask using something called a sacred tier. Again, they are we, we can pick some energy course. It's not really relevant right now because our bars are relatively small, but as you get more health and FP, this becomes more and more relevant. Now you can also allocate flask charges, which is what we are going to do. So remember what I said the um Cerulean to no, what are they called? I forget what they're called. The red ones and the blue ones. We call it red and blue. Red ones are for health, blue for mana. Now, as a caster, red is more important to us, the blue is more important to us than health. So, at least in the early game, obviously, depending on if we're getting stuck in with melee, the, the red ones will be more important, but right now, that's what we want. And these also uh, re reset the area. So, if you touch the side of grace, what we did at the start. You will activate it, which means you can use it as a fast travel point later in the game. We haven't got any others to travel to yet, but you can actually travel to these, except when you're indoors like now. Um, but if you rest at it, or just sit down, like it will respawn the area. So, just something to keep in mind. Now, let's test out some of our spells. We've got Flintstone, Pebble, boom, there you go. But keep in mind, these are the weakest enemies there are. This won't one-shot everything all the time. It's, it's not as powerful as it seems, right? But it serves as introductory to the game. Let's, let's try out a sword on this chap. Hello. Bye bye. Up here. There. Now this. We want our business step up. Because up here is the gun. Normally I ignore him and run through because you can touch take him later. But since we have range. Fuck this guy. Eat it. Now here we have what's called. Uh, rubber fruits. These are actually very useful for crafting. Not so much in the early game, because mainly you just use them to make food to feed Torrent, which is your horse, which we'll get later on. Um, and I tend to just not bother. But a lot of the other recipes also do include rubber fruits, so it's useful to you. You will have a, a limited supply. Now this guy here has a spear and a shield. If we try and use sp spells on him, we'll get the first round in like this. No, we won't. But if, if he uses the shield, well, okay. I was going to show you the kick, but never mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, what happens is they use a shield and it will block, mitigate a lot of the damage, but he was already too low. We got the first hit. Took him out. That's kind of disappointing. We'll show you the kick on this guy. Quick start. Hey. So, with a shield guy, basically, the holding shield up, it basically stuns them, which allows you to use, um, get an attack in. Obviously, it's a very dangerous method of doing it without a shield of our own, but it is what it is, right? Now, this, let's kill this guy with Glintstone Pebble. No, we won't. We're out of range. We're gonna run forward, like so. This guy we can use a stealth attack on if we want, I believe. We're gonna get right up his ass. And this will be a critical attack. Various points of the game, stealth is actually You can actually do a whole stealth build. I've never done it, because I'm not. I'm too impatient. But, uh, let's kill you. Kill that dude. But, you know. We're going to have a lot of fun with this build. Magic is so OP in this game. Might well. I think every build is viable. If you go to pure strength. Build a strength boy. Dead. 
Uh, what? Uh, let's talk about. So what happened there is we stagger broke him. Each enemy has like a stagger meter, and if you hit them enough times, typically if you use like a guard counter or something along those lines, if you do, if you deal enough damage in a short enough period of time, there'll be stance broken at long as you get a critical hit like that. So turns out being struck on the head with a short sword and flying sword technique. In a and as we, as we, we, I was going to talk about builds. Let's talk about builds for a moment. So I think if you're a strength boy, they will. Um, if you're strength, it's just OP. Dual wielding, two cost of weapons. You're going to kill anything you hear, right? Um, Faith, as we saw last se uh, series, Faith can just do some incredible things. Uh, boost your damage, there's all sorts of stuff you do. And Arcane, obviously, bleed builds are broken. You know, there's so many ways to play this game. And magic is just another one, another, another broken, another broken mechanic in my opinion. And I love it. I love. Don't know for thing, love it. Be broken, enjoy the game. Now this here is what's called a Stake of Marika. Now this typically, as you see, that's actually a boss fog wall. So what these do is typically they all signify that the boss is here. But what it actually means if we die, we won't. No spoilers, because he's pathetic. But if we die, you will actually spawn. You have the option of either respawning at your last side of grace or one of these Stake of Marika. So typically, if you see one of these, it's it's an indication you're entering either a boss area or a tough area in general. Let's traverse the mist. Now this guy is not a of boss is an insult to all bosses everywhere. This is basically a soldier god. These are just basic enemies. And we can kill him with four hits. Like that. Well they're funny enough. He's carrying a Lord's Lord's Great Sword, which is actually a um pretty lethal sword. Um if he was using uh they, they tend to use determination, especially in this area. On the weapons, which means they get like an extra damage attack. So if he was to hit us with that, he would have one shot at us. But you know, we have range. We can't. This is strength. This is just gestures are the single most useless thing in this game. They're only did we didn't land on the tree. We did, didn't we? The gestures are for multiplayer. So if you want to follow etiquette in jewels, but it's a waste of time. The only gesture that I found any use for is the erudite gesture, which is used for the converted towers or the erudite statues. So if you wear what we Locally called the Burger Burger King helmets, which is one of the um, wizard helmets, and do the perform the erudite gesture in one of these statues. You typically get grant access to the rest of the tower, so you can uh, get new powerful sorceries and also new memory stones depending on the tower. So that is worth getting, but we won't get that until the Lion of the Lake area. So that's a bit of a way. Now coming up here is what I call the oh no, the side of grace. Let's talk about this bit first. Now this is a fog wall. These, this is this is what your stone sword keys are for. But this, even if we had a stone, stone sword key, it wouldn't have helped here because you actually need two to get into this one. This is the finished folk hero's grave. This is for um, you can find two very powerful items in here. One is the Erd Tree's, oh, I forget, Erd Tree's favor, which is a talisman that increases your carry weight, health, and stamina, I believe. And the other is the Dragon Communion Seal, which is a great uh, sacred seal that actually scales with arcane. So if you want to do that bleeder arcane bleed we were talking about earlier. That's a seal for you. We're not going to do that in this episode. Well, we're not going to. We did that place is too tough for us anyway. Um, we don't need a lot of that stuff. We might use the Earth's favor. Now this is more multiplayer stuff, so we're going to throw these in the bin. Uh, the early opportunity. Now this is what I call the forever lift. There are a number of these dotted around the game, and they are my least favorite thing on all, all, all things. Right. This is in, in fact one of the longest ones. Some of them are very very long. They're so infuriating. I hate them. Uh, if you go to the underground regions of the game, like the Ansel River, and I forget what the other place is called, but there's a whole underground region of the game. We, we, we can't actually look there yet, but if you push the right stick in, you can flip between an underground and overground map. So those lifts take approximately 172 years to get down. Anyway, let's open this door. Let's hit the ground ring. So this is Vare. He's uh, White Mark. He's one of the first NPCs. He has a quest on, but again, it's more multiplayer. Uh, or said you get a talisman. He also insults us, causes, causes us maidenless, which we probably have a girlfriend. And he also tells us where to go. So we'll, we'll skip through his conversation as possible. Oh, yeah. Come to the left. Yep, yep, you have. Yep, Unfortunately, yep, yep, yep. you nope, are no, nope, yep. Luckily, yep, no, nope, nope. are you familiar? Mm -hmm. yeah, you oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yep, this yep, will lead yep, you yep, even okay, if it yep. leads. Mm -hmm. Grace of Castles, the home of the. Yep. That's it. One more thing. Castles, yep, if you see. Yep, yep. <laughs> <coughs> so what he actually talks us through We should actually hear this other grace here And then we should get what he's talking about this guy of grace he actually tells us where to go So ahead of us is Stormvale Castle. That's kind of the the 
legacy dungeon on this area. And what we are going to do is rest inside of crates. Because we want some health. Uh, while we're trying to reset our stuff. Um, down here is... These are again... Oh, took that. This is another multiple item. So this is a... Small gold effigy. So these... these um, summoning pools. So you can you, you can put your sign down and use a fell calling finger remedy to summon your friend to come help you or a some of people to help you play the game uh, but typically when you do that you're, it leaves you open to invasions which is not what i want that's why i turned the game turned off but that that there is one tough hombre he's kind of your first mean boss basically so when you start the game you go and attack him and he murders you we will be able to kill we, ironically we with our setup we probably could kill him if we had at least a horse of our own so we could just do hit and run tactics but we don't need to do that now I'm gonna kill one of these though. So, the sheep in the game can be farmed for small thin beast bones and sliver of meat, and also occasionally beast liver. Now, you can use beast, uh, we can use thin beast bones to make arrows. Now, we're not really gonna be a bow, bow centric build at all. I might, I'm probably gonna buy the short bow in due course because situationally quite useful to have a bow. But the damage, they don't scale very well, in my opinion. You can stack it all up with your with your um, arrows, reach hands. You can do all the stuff. But really, they're not very good in heat of combat. They're not. You can, they're not. They're not boss killers. Put it that way. But it has a zoom on it. So if you want to scope out areas, it's quite useful. And this uh, is the Church of Ella. And there is the nomadic, our first nomadic merchant. He sells a couple of items that are really important to us. But we'll get the set of grapes first, like so. And then we'll run here. Now this is a pithy table, I believe. And on here is a smithy stone, and one on its own will not do us any good. If we look in our inventory, we have one smithy stone. So you need two to level up to work. Sorry, smithy stone one will upgrade you to plus three, but you need two for the first level, four for the next, six. So, so eventually to get to plus three, you need 12 smithy stones. That's as high as you can go on this smithy table. We will get some more later, but not from this chap here. So, um, hello. You're a tarnished. I am a tarnished, I can yes. also see that you're not, then why not? I am Carly. Yep. yep, yep. So, what's the, he makes a recommendation. You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a craft. A crafting kit allows you to yep. make best essential, really. The kit costs a bundle, but the important thing is... And he's not wrong. So what he's talking about is this. Now, he sells a couple of bullshit items, too. Like, Burn Dagger is useful, telescope, eh, useless. Fell coming finger ready is, is... These are the crack pots I was talking about. We can actually buy... Well, we can't afford these right now, but we can... Pick up these two, then we have six grenades off the bat, which is incredibly useful. He sells a craft kiss. We'll buy that now. He sells these other ones, which are actually quite useful. So this, uh, if you press X, this allows you to build bone arrows, bone, bone, uh, bone bolts. And this one here is closer to bigger meat and bigger than what it could be. Now, either those two are particularly useful right now. But this one here, the Missionary's Cookbook, allows you to build holy pots, which we will find tarnished gold and sunflower in abundance. But not, we can't afford that right now. We have other priorities. So let's buy a torch. The torch actually is I'm not bad. You took my warning to heart. I did. Enough. The, um... Oh, you guys, but the torch is actually not a bad weapon. Uh, let's get rid of that. We'll pop you in there instead. So. Uh, our strength is much harder. If you ever run strength to succeed, you can start one-shotting some enemies with it. It's pretty good. You can actually level it up. It's not a bad weapon. Now, we actually want to pick up a broadsword, which you can pick up down this way. But before we do that, we're actually going to get press on to the gate front ruins, and that is because I want to pick up a key item first, which is um, our horse torrent, which will make everything else so much easier. Let's go see this chap here. Hello. Big man's down. He dropped it all to straight sword. Now that's actually a find. I don't think we can use it yet, but that's... They're actually pretty good swords. Let's... You know what? Let's, let's sneak attack on this guy if we can. Oh no. We definitely cannot. Right. Let's... Okay. Why am I still in crash mode? Right, I'm pushing the wrong button, that's why. Okay. Now here actually you find Kikris, which are actually pretty useful. They can actually, depending on your build, you can actually one shot some of the hot dogs with those. Up ahead is another, um, there's a cave. But we'll come back and explore that in another video. We're not going to do it this video. I don't think we'll have enough time. Our main objective 
needs to get an upgraded sword, right? So let's move as quickly as we can. As you can see, there should be another Sacred Marika just here, I think. Where the hell? Is there another one up here? Huh. Well, thought it was. But anyway, there is another. Well, there is. You can just, If you die when you're coming to the camp, you can either start here or at the side of Grace. Let's get rid of this uh, torch for now. We want to rest at this side of Grace. We are going to explore this camp, but probably not this video. I don't. Well. I've got somewhere else to go first. Uh, right, where are we going? We've got a lot to do. A lot to do, as I said. So, let's rest this side of grace. We're going to rest here, but I will warn you that we will get accosted by my least favourite NPC of all time in just a moment. And she gives us a huge lighter, but she just interrupts her animations just do my head in. So we're going to skip through all that. I'm going to warn you now. So if you if you, if you like playing that, sorry. I'm not I'm not watching it. I get, I get so sick of her. I'm glad when she burns. I'm glad. Right, let's... Yeah, no. Let's skip all of this. Now she's going to talk. We have to talk to her. Have you right. heard yeah, me, no, sir? No, but no, you, no, I can play okay. turning rooms don't care, to aid don't care, you. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Don't care. Then it's summon me. Ah, I, I bequeath to you. Yeah. Use it. Let me go, please, let me go. Yep. Yep. Let me go, please. This is why I don't like her. But she has given us useful items, so credit where credit is So she, what she's done is given us Torrent, who is our force. Uh, and we also will have... Uh, you know, we won't... We'll sort this out in a moment. No? We won't. We'll do it now. So. We're not going to clear this camp now, but what I want to do... There's a side of grace on the other side. I want to do a quick uh, speak to an NBC quickly. So we're just going to ignore everybody and run through the camp. It's going to be triggered. It's going to be loud, but I don't care. We'll pick up the map uh, when we come back and clear this place out. I will take the small across by though. So there is a side of grace here. Some runes there. That'll come in handy. We'll drop here. Get this. Just so we can come back to it later. We're going to ignore these boys. Good you know, lads. Now there's Nash of War up there in one of the teardrop scarrows. We're going to ignore that. And what we're looking for is the yeah, source yeah. of this noise. Could you help us out, what I don't know what that is. Now there is a funny looking bush. We will go. What else blue color right now? They do lose interest. You? Y yeah, you there. Stop pretending you can't see. Shush. Oh. What'd you go and do that for? Mm -hmm. Some claw. He's a whinging demi human. I was pushed out and I ended him. Oh, when they. And so this is all I hope. Or Edge gives a 10 mushrooms, which is a big deal. I could sneak back into the cave and bring <coughs> back something of actual value. They're not. Yeah. So. We're refining him in the cave. We're actually going to do this quest for him now. So what we want to do is jump back to. Church Vella. We'll find another NPC here who is actually much better than Melina. This, this is. Yep. May I have a word? You may. She calls herself the Witch Rena, but she's actually Rani. And she is. Her questline is going to be pivotal to us because she's the one that's going to provide us with the Duck with Great Sword eventually. That's quite somewhere up. But we'll talk to her now. She's going to give us a very useful item. A pleasure to meet thee, Tyana yes. Witch Rena. Mm hmm. I'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed, and upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Tis. Thou art possessed of the power, no? I am. To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I can call the spectral steed, yes. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thy Torrent's former master. Yep. Very pulling bell. Lone Wolf Ashes. This will come in handy for a couple of boss fights. It's also helpful for clearing the gate from rooms themselves. To the bell of course. Summon them with it. The spirits will obey thine command, but breathe now it is thine. Right. Forgive my I doubt we shall. How long will it be for the tar? Well, she disappears. And we will actually rest here. Till daytime. Talk to me now. See this? Why would I ever want to talk to you? Yeah. Don't like it. Yeah. Anywho, let's get back on target. 
what we want to do is actually reload, re reload, reload. Well, no, yeah. Let's put this one out. So we want to pop. Uh, I think those, and then red ones. We should be fine. So coming up here, the two things we want to do. We're gonna pick up these runes. That's quite important too. Now, just down here is a troll. Now, typically this early game, they're not a lot. Of, they're not a lot of fun to deal with, but because we have ranged, it shouldn't present much of a problem. We should get ourselves three thousand runes. So, lock it on his chest like that, and we will just. Give me a headache. Gonna, we don't want to stay too far from him because he has these spaz attack. He just puts his hand up. There we go. That wasn't that piece of cake. Thank you very much for the thousand runes, sir. Cheers. So, there's one more thing we want done here. What we'll do actually is kill a few of these. Oh, we don't want to do that. Kill a few of these birds too. Principally for I'm trying to get one in one go. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you uh, Vinstone Art. So down there are two of these octopus. Now we can do actually to kill those. They drop land up octopus ovaries, but they're gonna be a lot of, they're gonna take a lot a lot to kill them. They're very little rewards, so we're gonna ignore those for the time being. There is, on the other hand, a invisible teardrop scarab here, which is going to be very useful for us. And the reason is, is because we actually want. Well, it's not, I mean, it's not great Ash of War, I'll be honest, but it does drop an Ash of War, so it gives us an idea of the mechanic. So, what we want to do is actually just wait for him, keep Glintstone Arc, and we'll just kind of fire where he's rough direction. And I completely fucked that, didn't I? Well, <laughs> that's how you do it anyway. We'll, we'll get him this time, I promise. Take 17 years. Come on, come on, little man. Come around. Come on. There we go. Ash of War stamp stream. Now, we actually can't apply any Ash of War yet. <coughs> that will actually come when we take the Cape on Ruins, which realistically is probably going to be next video. Because we're running up to half an hour and I'll keep this short. As short as I can. This guy we're just going to take down with Glintstone Pebble, like so. One, two, three, four, five. Easy peasy. Now these guys at Caden Cell Souls, they actually drop, that, drop these pieces of armor. You can farm for that. It's they look pretty good. And the soul they drop is called a Dismounter. I'll take those. I'll take those. Super Mario Flash. But yeah, the sword they drop is actually called Dismounter. And I think, personally, it's a very, very good sword. Uh... It has just like that. It's not the best it's curved sword, but it, for for when you get it in the game, you can use it. Yeah, you're pushing it. Yes, yes, not, but you can use it. But for, for when, yeah, you know, for, for what it can do at this early in the game, it's quite a useful weapon. It's very heavy, but um, yeah, you can apply actually any actual water, so you can kind of perfect it, customize it to any build you're trying to make. So I think personally, it's, it's a good call. Now the tur turtles here, we can use to make. The pickle turtle neck, but we haven't got the recipe for it yet, so I'm not gonna bother farming those. Now, we want to kill these demi humans, so. I meant to use Glintstone Art, honestly. Like that. Yep, got a stone. Plus one more here. Hello. Shush. Shush. Okay. So down here is, uh, is another merchant. And actually, looking at the runes we've got, we can actually buy Soul from now. We won't be able to use it until we've got the necessary runes, but we'll tackle that after we've taken on the cave. So we'll speak to him now. Yeah, hello. What do you need? I don't want uh, any trouble. I don't want any trouble either. I just want to, I just want to sell you one of these. Are we going to actually no? Sell him all the stuff. And some close turn. Purchase. 
So he sells the armor quick too. This is actually useful to build firebound arrows, firebound arrow reflectors, firebound bolts, and neutralizing bonuses. New of these neutralizing bonuses is the most useful item by far. But this actually, as you see here, allows you to alleviate poison buildup. He also sells a short bow, which we're going to buy later. He sells the smithing stones, and he sells the broadsword, which is the item which you want. Now we can't use it yet because it has a strength of part of ten. But we'll buy it now to spend the money. And we'll buy all but two of his uh, smithing stones. Well done. Yep, I am. But we'll be back. I'll be back to get the rest of those things. So where are we? Down here? This should be the cave. Cave of Wonders. No, not that cave. <laughs> That's Aladdin. We don't know. So, um... I'm going to drink my voice. is so tickling. So there's a lot, lot of recording. I'm going to run down here. This is the coastal cave. Now we should run into our little oh. dummy areas. Oh. Oh. Winter Wilma. No. I am, I am. Oh. Yep. I'll sort I'll sort it, don't you worry. Oh. Oh. Nope. Oh. oh. Yeah, I won't end up anything like you, trust me. I'm I'm good, you're weak. I'm strong, you're weak. That's just how it is. Now let's make our way to the cave. So we can actually get away with Did I rest that side of Grace? Let's do that. <coughs> Get a little recharge, stuff recharge. I might have already done that. If I have, then uh, you can laugh at me. Feel free. Let's run down here. Like so. Now, there should be some more demi humans here. There's one. Hi. Bye. Bye bye. Not on there. Like this. Bring Kamos. Kamos is quite a useful crafting item for later. Next on our agenda is. Should be one here. Hello. Now, just around the corner. I assume he shouldn't present much of a problem. Back to present no problem. We're just too good. That's what we are. We are just too good. The magic is so OP in here that you. <coughs> now, just here is a government. Some guys. We actually summon an NPC to help us. He's a guy we actually let you kill later. I believe he's wearing scaled armor. Although it's a rusty version that he's wearing. <laughs> now, this will. Make the enemies harder and reduce the amount of runes that we get. That we get. But um, it will make this fight considerably easier for us between him and our summons. Essentially, what will happen is he'll draw the fire and we can just have some fun, right? But let's take on the demi humans. Now, there's a big thing going to wake up there. You can just see it. And, uh, oh, they're both woke up. Oh, no. This is not the ideal setup, to be honest. No. 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 Get it, wolves. No. You know what? Never mind. Help, help me. No. I oh, will take care of you at least. Got him. Yeah. That was not as easy as it was to practice on, but not hard, obviously. The early games to start the game are so. I mean, if you play the game more than once, it's not that difficult, right? We should get a magic shit ton of runes, right? Yeah. Let's press on. We want to get through as quick as possible. Uh, we have time. Put it on. Yep. Okay. So. 
third entrance. Now you can use this to teleport straight back to the beginning, but we're not going to do that now because what I want to do is actually um, get access to the um, side of Grace on the other side. This is a couple of items we want to pick up while we're here. So we'll jump up here, like so. We'll jump here. Take you down. Do that. Pick up this. Spotting butterfly. Very useful. Thank you very much. Keep the sword, shall we? Nope, no one. Yeah, there we go. Piece of cake. Where are we? Yes, so let's get on turrets very quickly. Focus, never focus. The first thing we want to do. Actually, no, we'll do that afterwards. There is a couple of items we want to pick up. Not here, though. Not here. Always make that mistake. I always make that mistake. Let's go up here. Herba, very useful. Kill this ram. They normally run at you if you don't, so let's get rid of him. Let's take your thin beast bone, sir. There are two. What's this? Great, great dragon player. That's actually very useful to make those neutralizing bonuses. Now down here there should be a teardrop scarab <clears throat> that we can use to get a summersmith stone. Which, oddly enough, is not the useful to this in the short term. As we don't have any unique weapons. But we'll come around to get them. Start building a supply of smithing materials because you never know what gear you might find and when. Obviously, we have some. Well, I'm going to try and use, like we did with the uh, the profit playthrough. I'm really, really going to try and utilize as many different types of weapons as we can. Because I've, I've got the carrion carry knight sword I want to use, and there's also the um, what do we call it? Uh, I forget what it's called. The yeah, carry knight sword and the dark great sword are on the list of things to play with. Okay. Let's get back on the horse. Let me know, 44 minutes. This is a long video. It should be short from here on out. We had in, the introductions are inescapable, right? I wanted to go through some things, explain all the joys of the astrologer. See, as you can see, the astrologer class, not much you can't deal with very early in the game. They just break things, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go through here. Here we go. And here we have the Dominator no, altar. Ritual Dragon Communion. Yep. Okay. Mm. Now we can't use any of this, we haven't got any Dragon Arts, and we're not going to be using this build at all. I just want to get that activated now. <clears throat> just, well, what I wanted was the Side of Grace, and I wanted the, the Smithing Stones, right? But, um. That's where I see it. Now we're going to very quickly jump back, back to one of these runes. So we want to jump back to Coastal Cove, fix the box to see Master again, give him his tailing materials. Like so, oh. hello. Oh. I will, yep. Give this a needle. It is. It. Now all this is for oh, he'll talk, won't he? I forgot, yeah, let him talk. Yep. Thank you. You're You're very, I always I am. wanted to be yep. Thank you very kind. I always wanted to. Okay, right. so what he, what that will do, he allows, he will, he will actually change, alter armor, sets of armor, set, either make them light or take them roof cape. It's essentially a waste of fucking time. Absolute waste of time. But what we, what we actually do want is the smithing stones. Oh, and we want to level up, I think. So we'll run to. Actually, you know what? We'll just farm a couple of these uh, dudes. Like so. Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you actually mind? I'll take those. Thank you. Rainbow stone. Totally worth it. Glowstone string. Totally worth it. So, anyway, let's get back to our magic friend. 
Yeah. Like so. Let's get the runes. Okay. Uh, I don't, want, stones to and I don't want any trouble either. I just, all I want to do is sell you this and this and this. I'm going to buy the last one of these. We've got the sword, we've got everything else we need. We'll come back to that. I actually want to use those mythic stones we got. Now there's one more item. Oh, fine. Yep. There's one more item we want here. Uh, we'll avoid those, avoid those. There should be a gold propel for somewhere I think it's here. Yep. Not essential to us straight away, but. Oh, you fucking idiot. That <laughs> was such a fool. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's um, jump. Let's try that again, shall we, without jumping in the water. I thought the spirit spring would work, but I guess that wasn't the spirit spring, was it? That was just waterfall. I guess we can pick up some more of these. I'll try not to stand on the merchant. There aren't many of those nomadic merchants left. If you following the Hyper Profit series, you find out what happens to those guys. It really isn't very pleasant. Most of them are dead, if not all. There's a very ha small handful of nomadic merchants around. Yeah. So let's not jump into the water again, should we not, Bart? that up okay go this high up is there an ice we could pick up doing that I think there is but uh I've got it let's go to the Dutch Villa and we will do what we came here for so I want to. So we have four Smithy Stones available. So we're going to level up you. No! I didn't want to do that, did I? Oh, you fucking moron. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well. We'll have to use that now. I wanted to level up this. We can't actually use the broadsword yet, but. Oh, you idiot. Well, no, it's alright. We can get some more. We can get some more. You know, but we want to level up this. No, we can't use that sword yet. But, um... We can level up. We should have enough to level two. Uh... Not in, quite enough for strength ten. Oh, man. It's just failing all over today. We'll use our short sword plus one, shall we? Although, I mean... We can't use that. Oh, that's strength then. That's actually a really good sword. That's a good equivalent. That has better criticals with that. But that's. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. We don't have anything else we can sell them, do we? No. No. So, how many do we need to level up? Not many. Well, we'll do it all that in the. In fact. We might even pick up some more smithing stones in the next area. So, next episode, we're going to clear the gate from ruins. We're going to find our first talisman, and we may even go and get ourselves a shield. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.